does it. Easy, easy. Touchdown! This is Arthur Neely calling the cape. Do you hear me? I'm on the moon. I'm touching the moon. long enough to touch it, just long enough to touch it. Do something? Wish I could. Some angel I'm with you. He can't even make a radio play. You want me to be honest with you? Yeah. It's your singing, or whatever that is you've been doing for the last hour and a half. What, you mean you did that? Yeah, I did that. That's not fair, Jonathan. I like music when I'm driving. Now, come on. Come on! All right. Cute. <laughs> Cute. All right. I can't have music. I want to eat. That all right? Fine with me. Good. <laughs> Can't you tell me when you're going to do that? I'm sorry. I thought you want to pick that kid up. What kid? I didn't see any kid. I had my mind on pancakes. <laughs> Where are you heading, son? In the Clover. Jump in. Thanks, mister. We're still going to stop for breakfast up there. Yes, we're going to stop for breakfast. Hey, son, you're welcome to join us if you like. Oh, no thanks. I'm not hungry. I'll just wait for you in the car. Hey, you sure? My friend here is buying. No, really. Good thanks. Hmm. Hey, there's a place right up there. You won't have to go start. because he's uh, too proud to accept charity. He's broke. He's probably a runaway. Boy, have I seen a lot of them in my day. Are you sure? I'm sure. Being a cop all those years, I can spot him a mile away. Broken a home and the family doesn't care. Kid runs off, heads for the big city. It is a kid like that won't stand a chance. Ready to order? Uh, yeah. I'm gonna have a cheese omelet, some sourdough toast, a bowl of chili. Oh, and bring me a big orange drink and a cheeseburger to go. And what about you? No, thanks. I think I'll just sit and watch him eat. Sure you ordered enough? Mm -hmm. Cheeseburgers for the kid. Got too much pride to accept a handout, so I'll just say, uh, well, my eyes were bigger than my stomach, and uh, I had an extra cheeseburger I couldn't eat. You know something, Mark? Your knowledge of people amazes. You're the one that said there's a lot of good people in this world, and we're here to try to help them. I can say that. No, I'll go out later and have a little talk. What's you doing? Stealing my car. The kid's stealing my car. You believe it? That little crook stole my car. I believe it. This never would have happened if you hadn't picked him up in the first place. <laughs> well, you're just a better judge of people than I am. Oh, that's cute. And I guess we better report it. Uh, you report it. I've got an appointment to keep. When you get through, meet me at this address. Meet you? How am I going to meet you without a car? Hey, your order's on the table. What do I care about my order, lady? Somebody just stole my car. Couldn't you make that car just... Oh, that's cute. Cute. Yes? 
Thank you. Evelyn? Dr. Bender, they told me at reception that you wanted to see me. Yes. What's the matter? Now, I hope you haven't changed your mind about Arthur coming home today. Tomorrow is his birthday, and he has been looking forward to coming home. No, no, you, you'll be able to take him home today. They've gotten all the tests back. And? And, as I suspected, he's no longer in remission. I see. Well, then, how long do I get to keep him at home until we begin treatments again? I have to be honest with you. There's no reason to begin treatments again. But you just said that he's no longer in remission. Evelyn, when we began chemotherapy, I told you and Arthur there were no guarantees. But he has been all right for six months. It has been like a, a miracle. He was clean. It was gone. All of it was out of him. You said so yourself. I told you then we could only hope that the remission was permanent. You lied to me, didn't you? You lied to me to protect yourself. Well, we've done everything possible. Well, you are going to treat my son. You are going to make him well. Or you will never break his medicine again. If it takes me the rest of my life, you... Makes me mad. You try to do somebody a favor, they wind up stealing your car. You ought to know better than pick up a stranger. Just a kid. Yeah, so is Billy. Billy? What are you talking about? Billy the kid. Look, if they're big enough to reach the pedals, they're big enough to steal your car. It's on the hot sheet. It'll turn up soon. You have a nice day. Thanks. I made other plans. the fire are you gonna kill somebody hey it's you it's my car my car hey follow that car now just a minute i'm a police officer for heaven's sakes randolph follow the car yes ma'am Step on it. You heard him, Randolph. Tore it. Can I help you? A uh, boy just ran into this building. He's got on a blue denim jacket. Uh, what do you want from him? He stole my car. 
come, come in. Vieni qua subito, subito! Jogging, eh? You stole again. And this time a car? You stole it, didn't you? Didn't you? E rispondimi! Yeah. Oh, no. No, no, no more, no. I told you before, eh? No more! Mister, you take him. The police know him. They'll put him away this time. Oh, Grandma, please, I promise. Oh, you, you promise. promise. Piantala, how many times you promise? I can't take it anymore. Night after night, I awake in bed, wondering where you are, what you're doing, waiting for the telephone to ring. Oh, no, please, no. Mister, you take him. Let him go to jail. Maybe he'll learn something. I, I don't know no more. I, I can't try anymore. Let's go. You know, you're just like my mother. She ran out on me, too. Neither one of you love me. Ah, oh, don't you talk to me about love. You don't break the heart of somebody who loves you. All right, you sit here. I'll go in and tell them to pull the stolen report, that it was a mistake. Then we'll go get something to eat. What are you talking about? That's what I said. You're not one of those weirdos, are you? Come on now, will you? I'm trying to give you a break. Now, you want to go to breakfast or you want to go to jail? Breakfast. Sorry to just ring your bell like this, but your phone isn't listed. Do I know you? Well, your husband might have mentioned me. We were in training together in Houston at NASA. I'm Jonathan Smith. Well, I'm sure he must have, but there were so many names. I, I understand. Gordon had a lot of friends. He was that kind of guy. Yes. Yes, he was. Anyway, I was in the area, and... Gordon was always talking about you and your son. Arthur, isn't it? Yes. Well, after all the time I spent with him, I don't know, I thought I could share some of it with you, some of the good times we had. That's very kind. Well, well today is not a very good day. I understand. Here I am, a stranger. I come beating on your door. I, I would like to leave this for the boy. Gordon was always talking about him, and I feel like I know him. That's very kind of you. That's nothing. I'll be on my way. It was a pleasure to meet you. Your husband was the best. Goodbye, Mr. Dean. Mr. Smith, uh, forgive me. I... Arthur's in the backyard. Why don't you give him the present yourself? Why, well, you sure? I don't want to intrude. You're not. I apologize. My son hasn't been well, and we just came home from the hospital. I'm sorry. Oh, he's going to be fine. Please. I know he'd get a kick out of meeting somebody who knew his father. Okay. I won't stay long. 
Maybe you can go around the side yard. Thanks very much. Uh, your dad told me there was just no feeling like it. Standing all by himself on the surface of the moon, staring out over thousands and thousands of miles of space and seeing the Earth. So it was all blues and greens with big, white, puffy clouds around it. Now, your dad told me it looked so peaceful it was hard for him to believe that people living there would want to hate and make war with each other. I want to do that someday. Touch the moon. You will. You think so? Well, sure, I do. I bet you find the same peace your father did. I hope you're right. I sort of pray for it at night. I don't want my mother to know about it, though. Being an astronaut. It sort of upsets her after what happened to my dad. Wow. They say he was a real hero. Oh, he sure was. You know, your father could have ejected from that plane, but he stayed with it till he got it over the ocean. There's no telling how many lives he saved. I don't know if I could ever be that brave. I don't think any of us do until the time comes. Have you ever been afraid of dying, I mean? I was once. Mr. Smith, there's a friend of yours out in front. Thank you. Oh, you don't have to go, do you? Oh, I think I better. Oh, can you stay for dinner, please? Well, I don't want to intrude. Oh, you won't be honest. I'll ask my mom, but I know she won't mind. Please? All right, you go ask your mom, and I'll see what my friend's up to. Oh, and thanks for the submarine. My pleasure. Stay in the car, make sure nobody steals it. So you got the car back. Yeah. Got the kid, too. Why didn't you turn him in? That's a good question. I don't know. I just couldn't, you know. Been in trouble before. If I turn him in, they're going to put him away. Yeah, but you're the one that's always telling me a crook's a crook. I know, I know. This is different. He doesn't care what happens to him. He's given up on life. What are you going to do with him? I don't know. Got no folks. Got a grandmother. She's given up on him. What do you mean, what am I going to do with him? You're the one who wanted to pick him up in the first place. Mr. Smith, my mom said it was okay if you stayed for supper. Oh, that's very kind of you, Mrs. Neely, but I really can't leave my friends here. But maybe another time. Oh, Mom, can they please stay? All of them? It's barbecue and hamburgers. We can throw a couple more in the fire. He's right. You're more than welcome. That's very kind of you. All right, then. I'll go throw the coals on. Okay. I still want to know what we're going to do with that kid. Well, we'll see. I told you my boss works in strange ways. All right, keep your eyes on this. You're not going to believe your eyes. I call this my David Copperfield eat your heart out trick. I don't know how it works, but it does. It stays balanced because the weight on each side of the fulcrum is equal. Oh, yeah, well, I know that. I just, you know, I didn't want to give it away. <laughs> Mom, can Tony and I go up in my room and play for a while? For a little while. Come on. I'm not much for playing with toys. I got some good stuff and a telescope. We can see the craters on the moon like crystal. It's a good night for that. Hey, I'd like to see that too. Come on, Tony. Tony, come on. I can show you stars as big as our solar system. It's millions of miles in diameter. Hundreds of millions, actually. It's quite a little guy you got there. Yes, he is. I hope he doesn't talk Tony's ear off up there. Oh, I'm sure he won't. I'm I hope sorry. I'm, not... I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say I hope it hasn't been an inconvenience our being here. Oh no, not at all. Your turn. What? We're going to say something. Oh, just that I'm sorry for being so quiet. I guess it's just been a long day. I can understand that. You can? I think I'll go make some fresh coffee.
I can't believe it. I know I have more coffee here somewhere. I have a day maid who does some of the shopping when I'm at work. And no matter how many times I tell her to try and put things back in their proper place. Jonathan, you were there. How could it happen? How can he go all the way to the moon and back and then die on a flight from Houston to... How? Why? My God! How could he do that? I need him! I need him so much! See, that thing is clear as day. Hey, Tony, come take a look at this. Tony. I got to go to the bathroom. There's one at the end of the hall. Your friend's not too happy about being here, is he? <laughs> Afraid not. What's wrong? Well, that's kind of hard to explain, Arthur, you see. Both of his parents left him. He's kind of bitter. Yeah, I know how he feels. I was angry at my dad when he died. You were? Yeah. It's just something you go through. I was pretty angry at him for leaving me, and then, and then I blamed myself. How could you do that? Well, he was flying home for my birthday, and... I thought maybe if it wasn't for me, he'd still be alive. It's all part of something you go through when you lose somebody you love. I'll show you that big red star I was talking about. I keep asking myself, why? Why my son? Why should some old person live and my little Arthur die? Why doesn't God just take me instead? Oh, because you still have a life to live. A life? What kind of life? A different one. Oh, I know it's never going to be the same, but it can still be good. You don't believe that now, but you will someday. Mom! Mom, can Tony sleep over tonight? That way he'll be here for my birthday tomorrow. Oh, I don't know. I thought we'd spend a quiet day together and... Oh, Mom, I don't want to spend a quiet day. Maybe we could all go someplace. Arthur, you have just been out of the hospital one day. That's all the more reason to go someplace. Please. Is it all right? It's perfectly all right with us. Thanks, Mom. Tony, it's okay. We can use my sleeping bags. Well, it's getting late. Mark and I better be going. Thanks an awful lot for dinner. Um, thank you for being here. Look, we got nothing to do tomorrow. If you feel like some company, I thought maybe we could take a ride, go out to the park. It's only an hour. I think the boys would have fun. All right. How's 10 o'clock? 10's fine. All right, we'll see you then. We'll let ourselves out. Good night, everyone. I don't think it's a good idea leaving Tony here. I don't trust him. No, uh, it's a good idea, believe me. Why don't you go rent us a room? We're going to be here a while. What are you going to do? I'm just going to hang around here. Uh-huh, uh-huh. See, you don't trust him either. We'll both stay. Now, there's no reason for us both to stay. You need your sleep. What about you? Mark. Oh, yeah, I forgot. All right, I'll see you back here at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Right.
sleep, sir? I, I couldn't sleep. I was worried about my grandma. Oh, I can understand that. What you got in the bag? Nothing. Just some stuff Arthur gave me. He's got a room full of junk. Uh, that was nice of him. Why don't you let me see? Sure. All right, I took some stuff. I got plenty. What did you bring me here for, anyway? To see how the other half lives? That dumb kid's got everything he wants. No, not quite. Big deal, his old man's dead. He's got a mother. He's got a big house. But he's got cancer. That's right, he's dying, Tony. He's only got a little time left, and he wants to spend that precious time with you. Why? I don't know. But whatever the reason, he deserves better than having you run out on him. I don't even know. <laughs> Whose fault is that? Look, I'll make a deal with you. You spend a few days here with Arthur. At the end of that time, you're free to go. Go where? Anywhere you want. How do I know I could trust you? How do I know you won't turn me in? Look who's always talking about love and trust. Why don't you try earning it? All right. I'll put the stuff back. I'll stay. Good. I'll see you in the morning. Gonna hang around out here all night? No. How do you know I won't take off again? Because you won't. Sleep well, Tony. Hey, Tony, do me a favor. Take this soda over to Mrs. Neely. I think she could use it. Sure. Smith. Look at how that baby duck follows its mother. Yeah, that's really amazing, isn't it? And that's not even her baby. What? Yeah, I was talking to the park attendant. Said that mama duck lost her baby and little baby's mother died. So sure enough, mama took over and she's been raising it just like her own. Are you kidding? No, I'm not kidding. You know, God's world is pretty wonderful, I think. There's a mother that needed a baby's love and a baby that needed a mother's love. It's a shame it couldn't be that way with people. I couldn't. walked another step today. <laughs> and I was worried about Arthur. <laughs> oh, no, he was ready to keep going. I know. I'm glad he has Tony. They seem to be getting along well. Tony's good for Arthur. Yeah, and Arthur's good for Tony. So are you. Me? Yeah, you. You listened to him today. You encouraged him. You don't feel like a person, a person of value. Well, he is. He's fun and very bright. Uh, you know that, but he doesn't. Uh, his parents deserted him. Well, he pretends to blame them, but he doesn't. He blames himself. And why else would a parent leave a child unless that child were worthless? It's very wrong. I know, but he believes it. Spending time here could change that. I can see that today. Well, he's very welcome. But his grandmother... Oh, I feel a little bit guilty about this, but I already talked to her about the boy. She loved the idea. She was so happy he wasn't in jail. Believe me, Evelyn, spending time here with Arthur and you could turn that boy's life around.
I'm sorry. I should have talked to you about this first. I'll take Tony home with me tonight. It's not Tony. I was watching Arthur playing today. Laughing. Running. I love you so much. I don't know why God would want to take him away from me. Maybe it's because God loves him too. I wish I could be sure of that. You will be someday. All right, that's it. Come on, let's hit the sack. Oh, come on, we're not tired. Can we watch one spooky tape? No, you can't. Thanks. You're welcome. All right, now get some sleep. Jeez, we only wanted to see a few minutes of it. You'll see it tomorrow. Thanks. You're welcome again. See you guys tomorrow. Darn, what a great time to watch a spooky. Lightning and everything. You want to hear something spooky? What? Jonathan told me. No. My mom must have told him. I didn't think you knew. Yeah. Nobody told me. But I know. And you've been sick as long as me. You know. You can tell the way people are with you. What's it feel like? No one. Kind of scary. It was real bad when I first got sick. But it's funny. After a while, it... It changes. It's almost like how you feel when you're going to go to a new school. You're scared. But you wonder what it's going to be like. That's my mom I'm worried about. She's gonna be all alone. It's gonna be awful hard for her. That's why I wanted you to be here, Tony. What do you mean? Look, I know this may sound dumb because we've only known each other a couple of days, but I don't have a lot of time to waste. See, you don't have anybody. Before too long, my mom's not going to have anybody. How do you know for sure? I mean... It... I know, Tony. It's like it was meant to be. Like fate. What are you talking about? I'm talking about two people who need each other. You like my mom, don't you? Don't you? I like her, sure. And she likes you. I could see that today. She's a good mom, Tony. She's the best. You'd have a good home here. Hey, come on. I, I mean it. We could be like brothers, couldn't we? Would it be so bad? I don't want to die now my mom's going to be alone. And you don't want to live being alone, do you? I get a lot. I don't have time for lies, Tony. Will you think about it? Will you? Yeah.
taking it pretty hard. We kind of pretended like we were brothers, you know. I always wanted a brother. <laughs> It's okay to cry, Mom. It's all right. Put your head here. Oh. I thought I was going to be afraid, but I'm not. I'm going to die, and I'm not afraid. But Tony's going to live, and he is afraid. He's afraid he's gonna be alone like before. I know he didn't say that, but he is. Mom? You won't let him be alone, will you? <laughs> no. You promise? I promise. <laughs> You've been through a lot together, you and me. I think that's made us stronger. I want to rest now. I'll be right here. No. No, go stay with Tony. I want to be with you. You always will be, Mom. I love you, Mom. I love you, too. Come on now. I want to rest. Two's not bad. Hey, what are you talking about? You said I'd get to the moon. Yeah, so I did. Are you ready? Are you kidding? No, I'm not kidding. Take a look out the window. There it is. Smith, I'm getting closer to the moon. It's beautiful, Mr. Smith.
I touched it, Mr. Smith. I touched the moon. You're home, son.